will you and I, will we be people of God who he uses to demonstrate around us the transformational power of being reconciled to him and to others through forgiveness. God desires to have all things reconciled to him. Imagine if followers of Jesus not only forgave, but took it a step further and lived reconciled, first and foremost to God, our heavenly father, but then to others around us. Total forgiveness and reconciled relationships help us to demonstrate to the world, to those that aren't following the Jesus, this up, uh, that aren't following Jesus, this upside down, wild living of reconciliation and of radical forgiveness. In October 2006, there's a story that highlights this unbelievably. There were five little girls that were uh, uh, shot and killed in an Amish schoolhouse in Pennsylvania by a, a lone male. And what was unbelievable for most, and what I hope and I think will be remembered most of this story is not that guy's name, not the, the hate and the violence, but for the act of compassionate forgiveness and rec reconciliation that followed that event. Listen to a report, and I'm kind of summarizing, but this is straight up um, uh, facts <laughs> uh, from, from the aftermath of the act. On the day of the shooting, a grandfather of one of the murdered Amish girls was heard encouraging young relatives not to hate the killer, not to hate the killer, saying, we must not think of this as an evil man. Another Amish father noted he had a mother and a wife and a soul, and now he's standing before a just God. A member of a, another community nearby explained, I don't think there's anybody here that wants to do anything but to forgive. And not only reach out to those who have suffered a loss in that way, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. The killer's family got a spokesperson who reported that an Amish neighbor came over and just sat and comforted the family for hours on end. Amish community members visited and comforted his widows, his parents and his parents-in-laws. One Amish man held the suspect's sobbing father in his arms for up to an hour, not talking, just comforting. This part kind of blows my mind. The Amish established a charitable fund for the family of the shooter. They even went so far as to pay for the suspect's funeral costs of which 30 members of the Amish community showed up to his funeral. Marie Roberts, the widow of the killer, was one of the few outsiders invited to the funerals of the victims. And she wrote an open letter to her Amish neighbors, thanking them for their forgiveness, their grace, and their mercy. She wrote, and I quote, your love for our family has helped to provide the healing we so desperately need. Gifts you've given have touched our hearts in a way no words can describe. Your compassion has reached beyond our family, beyond our community, and is changing our world. And for this, we sincerely thank you. This is what happens when people, through the Spirit of God, find the ability to seek forgiveness. It can change the world around us. It can heal people's lives. This is what it looks like. I want to close by... <clears throat> turning our attention back to Philemon for a moment. Historically, we don't know exactly what happened between him and Onesimus. We're not sure if Philemon followed through and, and, and uh, accepted Paul's challenge of accepting him back. We're not sure if Onesimus paid uh, Philemon back, if he remained a slave or if he was set free. But most scholars believe that Onesimus was forgiven by Philemon and eventually set free. Fast forward 50 years to 110 AD. We, try and we find an intriguing mention of a man named Onesimus in a letter from an early church leader to the church in Ephesus. It's not part of the Bible, but Ignatius writes and references several times to the bishop of that community, the, the church father over that region. It was a bishop's name. It was a man named Onesimus. Here's a painting depicting 
the bishop named Onesimus being martyred for his faith. And while we can't be certain that this was the same Onesimus, many believe that it could be. Could it be that a runaway slave, a thief, became a bishop and the church father? Perhaps or perhaps not. But what this story un, uh, undoubtedly illustrates is the power of radical forgiveness, which leads to radical reconciliation. And it opens up unimaginable possibilities in the kingdom of God. Will you and I, will we be people of God who he uses to demonstrate around us the transformational power of being reconciled to him and to others through forgiveness? God desires to have all things reconciled to him. And we have the chance to be a part of that reconciliation by embracing forgiveness.